good evening guys good evening my sir good evening sir also good evening my kushi uh, good evening varatra sir i think uh, that's the way i would address you i was really confused i think for the longest while thinking that how would i address you first um okay i think varatra sir is fine enough so yeah guys i'm i'm going to give you guys a brief just uh, brief history of what uh, why are we here with him so parathra sir is one of the award winning film director screen writers and documentary film makers and he's from kerala so and uh, and he's been known for working on shoestring budgets and working with new and inexperienced actors also uh, start and also you know highlighting the culture and study of kerala the human nature and all that and uh, it was also told that his films films have gained accolades at several international uh, film festivals including the moscow international festival the film festival at rotterdam and one of the international film festival at kerala also so that's really inspiring to uh, hear sir and we really welcome you and we are looking forward to have great things to hear from you Yeah, uh, thank you, Kushi, and um, uh, thank you, Mahesh, for um, inviting me to this conversation today. Um, it's really an honor to meet all of you and uh, talk to you and answer your questions. Um, thanks, thanks a lot, John. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I know how busy you are with all the projects and all the trips, all the festivals, and all those things. So um, you know, it's it's really good to have you here. Uh, say before we start, let me just introduce. Um, So, uh, this is Vistoon's Academy of Media and Design, and we are primarily a uh, design and media academy, a multimedia academy. Uh, so, um, we are into um, multimedia training. So, there are students from different multimedia domains in here. Um, there are students of animation, visual effects, design, filmmaking, um, you know, photography. so it, it's a collection of different um students from different domains and uh, we have uh, different student communities as well so we have we have three active communities student communities right now one is wis design then there is something called wis films and uh, there is wis effects so wis films is a community which actually talks a lot about i mean uh, extra curricular um you know community where um, film appreciation film um, discussions and film making will happen so um, as a part of this we recently made a film called samsara um, i think you might have seen that in my wall uh, i've been sharing a lot of posters of this and all that so um, they are really interested and keen on all these extra curricular activities and they are you know into um, the films and they want to learn more about film making and stuff like that so um, you know uh, that's basically the audience and we have students from around the uh, you know uh, around the nation and currently it's all happening online majority of the sessions are happening online because of covid uh, things like that so um, soon we'll be starting offline sessions and these kind of activities will become more um, you know um, active so um, again the, so that's just to give you an idea about uh, our academy and things like that now um don't uh, let me just ask you let me start with that for a students who doesn't you know um is not very aware about you can you just briefly explain your career journey till now very very briefly yeah sure um my you know i studied at a film institute just like most of you guys um uh, it was in i actually i studied in sydney um and it was called uh, international film school of sydney at that time now they have changed the name um uh, when i studied there uh, it was mostly uh, the course was uh, you know it was structured as screenwriting direct uh, direction and production so it was it had three parts um but you know like we had um classes some days we had classes on screenwriting some times we have classes on cinematography like we had to learn everything a little bit of everything and um and uh, as a filmmaker i think it's very important to um learn about all aspects of filmmaking 
um so you, you know when you uh, eventually communicate with your crew crew you know uh, what you are talking about and uh, what you have to ask about so yeah then um, after finishing my uh, course i came back to in, uh, india in 2014 and um, my first feature uh, film shavam was made in 2015 um at that time i didn't know anything about distribution um even you know even now i am you know kind of clueless because you know in the independent uh, scenario of filmmaking we still you know it's very you know the you know the most difficult part according to me is distribution um anyway after uh, making the film i you know i had this idea that or you know the false idea that uh, the people will just you know uh, reach out to the film and they would uh, watch it if they were, if you know if the film is good that's what i that's what i used to believe at that time but now then slowly i realized that you are not the only filmmaker out there and you know you are not the only one making films um and you know pr is a huge thing so many people are making films and the competition is uh, so high later um while um later i um managed to strike a deal with netflix luckily and um the film was later screened on netflix um then by that time i have i had already started the production of my second film uh, which was with uh, it was um, more of an art house film like um, it was you know it was contemplative in nature um, also it had only two major characters and um, uh, not many dialogues uh, and you know the you know, i and it, it was in a really slow pace um, if you look at the film so um, and it was not meant for everybody uh, for obvious reasons um but um later that film was screened on amazon and it went to a couple of festivals here and there but you know none of these festivals that shavam and with went were um really big or anything they were mostly b grade festivals um at that time i didn't know how the festivals worked um i yeah just entered uh without a box and film freeway and used to send um to all the festivals that i could find and uh, only after making two big mistakes i realized how not to approach film festivals um and then um the third film happened uh, in 2019 only um it um a few i was you know i was looking for producers i so uh, i asked almost to, oh, everyone i could find uh, for funding for a, for the next film i you know i was um, i you know i was searching for a um, finance uh, you know for the finance but later uh, when i was least expecting it a bunch of guys came to me and asked if i have any script that i was ready to uh, work on and uh, make a film about they had actually seen the film uh, shavam and that's how they um, thought about working with me and um, at that time i had a script actually i had a couple of scripts at that time and i told them one story and straight and straight away they liked it and they said that they could uh, we could start the pre production straight away and um, yeah then you know the that film happened in within uh, less than 5 4 months then um, that was the film 1956 central travel go that's the first film that uh, traveled to a proper festival outside india like um, uh, i mean when i say proper festival um, a physical festival that um, that was ready to pay you, you know pay to take you there as well so um, uh, it it went to moscow international film festival and also uh before that because the producer was a really nice guy they uh, they were ready to screen the film at um busan film market as well also goa film market um so it made some uh, impact uh, in the festival circles even the festivals uh, uh, which 
it didn't end up taking the film uh, still watched the film and they had something to talk about the film so that was a um, very positive thing for me as a filmmaker then um, in 2020 um, when we were least expecting it um, the covid uh, lockdown happened and i was um, clueless about what was going to happen next or how you know my career was going to go or what i would be doing next you know it was you know like nothing was clear for me and um, it was at that time i decided to make an indoor film like um, uh, with just my partner as um, you know the act actor or the actress um, I, it was um, uh, one person acted in the film and uh, but at the same time i used some of the footages that i had previously shot uh, back in 2016 um, when I was in Kolkata. So I used that footage and uh, coupled that with um, the interior footage of the drama, the relationship drama that I was uh, shooting and um, made it um, into an experimental film about um, a filmmaker's um, relationship struggles. And um, uh, it was uh, also, it was a contemplation about the you know the uh, the language itself how um, camera you know the uh, how camera can act as a tool for violence uh, so uh, that was um, a thought that has been going on in my mind for a long time and um, i used that opportunity to um, you know experiment experiment with it and that's how that film everything in cinema happened but that cinema, after making that film, I was still waiting for another year, almost a year, for uh, so that I could launch it at a festival. And when I could eventually, it um, uh, I could uh, screen the film at Rotterdam Film Festival, and uh, it was one of the be best experiences as I you know I have had as a filmmaker so far, and. Um, then uh, after six months, I worked on another film uh, with um, if you are from Kerala or if you are aware of Malayalam cinema, you may be aware of Rima Kalingal too. So she acted in that film. It was the uh, the film was called Sandoshatin Devanand Rehasim in Malayalam or in English. It was called Joyful Mystery. And um, it was um, again, it was, a, you know, I um, chose this uh, idea of a challenge for myself um, in which only two people are acting in the film uh, m for most of the part. Um, there's another person doing a cameo in between. Um, then um, um, it's a relationship drama again set in a single and set in a set inside a car and it was shot in a single shot. Uh, the entire film was shot like that. So um, that was the challenge and um, you know but i was relying mostly on the um, actors um, and like and luckily i got uh, two brilliant actors rima and jidin and um, yeah then that film happened and um, then uh, you know it was um, it was premiered online before that i was lucky enough to screen that film at iffk also, the film uh, went to Moscow International Film Festival in the main competition. Yeah, and we, um, here I am, you know, writing, uh, trying to write the future films that I am working on. Right. Uh, it, it's an amazing journey. So, uh, but, you know, I, I we just want to know uh, a little more detail about these films because there is something that is special about uh, you know, the subjects that you choose, the styles that you choose and all those things. So I just wanted to know the process behind that. So for instance, uh, Shavam, I think when it when it came out, um, I think that was one of the first Malayalam films which, you know, I saw on Netflix. Um, it was just there. I don't remember many films, Malayalam films were there at that time. I think this was in 2015 or 16. I'm not very sure about that. I think around that time. and um, I saw the film uh, in Netflix itself. So um, it was a path breaking film as an independent film. It didn't actually um, choose a very comfortable, uh, you know, narrator. 
you actually went straight into uh, cinema editing. I think um, this could be the first film that I have seen from India, which actually uses the cinema verite style of uh, narration for people who are uh, not aware of the term cinema verite. It's a the style of filmmaking where um, you uh, as an audience is put directly inside the film. Just you know, um, there there are no short gimmicks. There are nothing that you actually see on a regular film. None of that is there. You are directly inside a conflict or you're you're inside a space and then you're experiencing all these people going through a lot of emotions and actions so um it is not easy to pull off it is that's a very very challenging um you know narrative and um that is something that no, no, a, a first time filmmaker will sort of um be afraid to actually go that direction and uh, why did you choose that and you you did an amazing job in that and that that was like um you know, a spectacular film, but uh, how did you get that courage to do that uh, in your first film? It was, um, you know, I, I didn't have a choice, actually. Um, when I was uh, thinking of making the first film, um, this, I had written several scripts and one of the scripts I really wanted to make, you know, like at that time I was um, hugely inspired by um, you know the films of Tarkovsky and um, I was trying to make a film uh, you know as personal as the mirror um, for Tarkovsky so um, uh, you know at that time I was going for that when I wrote the script I found out that you know uh, it would cost at least two crores to make that film happen and um, I didn't have a producer. And even if I had a producer, there was no, you know, like it was not at all possible um, to get a, a distribution for that kind of film. And, uh, or, you know, I had no clue about how the festivals worked or anything. Um, it was just a, you know, like very wild dream. And um, then um, one of my friends whom I was, um, you know, talking to very regularly and who was actually um, helping me find funds and all. He asked me, okay, this is what we have got. Like we have got only six lakhs uh, rupees. Um, so do you think it's possible to make something within that budget? And I said, okay, um, I have this idea. Um, this thought I had when I was in the film school about you know a funeral uh, nothing else happens only the funeral is there um, a bunch of people come for a funeral and they take part in it and they go that's it um, then he was like that sounds r really nice and we could actually do it um, he was impressed by the idea and uh, luckily you know I, so i got a, a producer so his name was shijo and he is the same producer for Sandosh Tindyon and Dehsim as well. So uh, then we went on to make that film and um, it was, um, you know, I, I, I didn't have any thoughts about, you know, um, making a conventional film at any stage. I never thought about, you know, I wanted, one of the main reasons I chose film as a, you know, as a medium of communication is that it is possible to go in any direction that you want. You don't have to confirm to any system that's already in place. Um, you can find your own voice and you can do, you know, whatever um, you want with the medium. And, uh, you know, the only thing is that, you know, you, you can use sound and uh, the visuals. And um, so that film, I didn't have a story. I didn't have a hero. I didn't have a... Um, a central character. Um, it was all about a bunch of people um, gathered at a funeral. So, yeah, um, I didn't think about, you know, like uh, challenges or um, other than the practical ones, you know, how to make it happen or um, how I will be executing these things. Um, uh, yeah. Cool. Got it.
now uh, when you when you moved on to your next film uh, with uh, it was it was more of um, you know uh, it was complete change in the style that you have used uh, from you know uh, shavam where uh, you know in shavam the camera was actually running around where um, in with the, the the camera was almost static almost time and then characters were actually moving um, then again when you think about 1956 there is a Uh, completely different language that you're using it is more um you know sort of very defocus shots right everything is in you don't use any shallow depth of field or anything like that there is a lot of classic inspirations that you know uh, we could see in the film the framing and things like that and it's, it's more like a man versus nature and it's 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 very slow progressive and all that that is a different completely different style then you have tried something completely new in uh, everything in cinema and then again something completely different when you tried a single take um you know shot from the dashboard of a car where two people are driving to a particular location and you know it's all ab- about their conflict uh, which is revealed through the conversation that they are having so my uh, my question is like where how did you how do you come up with these concepts and um you know is it natural is it is the the style often um you know comes along with the concept or do you basically think about a concept and then you come up you know you fix on a style like you know this is the best way to actually tell the story so i should do this or you know do you uh, is, is it natural or do you have to force a narrative into it what is your process uh, while you are coming up with concepts yeah i um you know that's very interesting um i you know when i was making shavam um i didn't think about any other style of filmmaking you know, like uh, for me you know um it um, you know it was um, one location it was restrained in a lot of ways one location and at the same time was happening between uh, one night and uh, an afternoon so less than 12 hours uh, so when i was thinking about how to shoot that um, the, the only thing that came to my mind was you know to have a moving camera but at the same time i didn't want a um, steady cam which would be too fluid and you know that that fluidity might ruin the you know dynamic nature and i wanted camera to be one of the participants um of the uh, funeral so um, that that was the basic idea uh, so i think you know to answer your question uh, i usually think about the role of camera in the film when i usually uh, make a film um, even in with uh, when i came to with after shavam um you know i didn't want to repeat the same thing that i did in shavam so i wanted to um have a cameras um, non participating um outsider so it's especially because it's a very intimate relationship uh, between a father and son so i wanted the camera to stay back and um you know observe them from a distance um i didn't want in, uh, i didn't want the camera to get into the intricacies of their emotional uh, you know stuff so um, that was the approach in um, when you know in my second film so when it came to 1956 again um you know i i tried to think about the role of camera um how it should be participating should it be just like uh, my second film or can it be you know like little more intimate with the characters um how much can it move um uh, what would be the possible reason for moving if they are if it's moving at all so i think about all these things during the uh, short division uh, and you know that's that's when it happens but for sandosh tinte on and agasim um alone um, i you know it it came in the beginning itself i had this idea that okay uh, since it's a relationship drama uh, it should be restrained but i didn't want to set it in a um, room again because uh, i had done not, done that already with everything in cinema so i didn't want to repeat the same thing uh, so i decided to leave the camera at the front um, giving both of them equal space and um, i didn't want to take sides again um, 
yeah so you know like uh, you know basically you know you think about the role of the camera um, I, but it sometimes happen when i am already writing the film sometimes it happens after writing the film sometimes it you know these thoughts are there like different options are there in your mind while you are already writing the film great great all right so um now uh, uh, to a more uh, generic uh, question uh, before that i just wanted to know i had a technical doubt uh, when it comes to sandosh nane on the uh, same see when you are actually moving something uh, you know uh, the car is moving and then you are shooting the um, you know the two actors who are actually sitting there it's a technical thing i just wanted to know how did you ma- manage the storage where um, you know this com- continuous um, action or the continuous film is happening in one take how did you actually manage the storage uh, while it was happening i mean just out of curiosity i wanted to yeah. know how did you do it? yeah i had an external hard disk and I, i used an external hard disk where it was um, being stored and also also i used uh, some external um, equipments to uh, give power to the camera as well um we had kept some uh, powerful um us uh, you know ups and uh, batteries at the boot of the ca- boot of the car um you know luckily i got um you know two technicians um the the dop saji and associate cameraman jensen they were really good at sorting out these things and you know they came up with solutions um, every time there was a problem so yeah and we we even uh, lit up the face of the characters from inside the car uh, we used some extra lights and stuff um, that was also powered from the uh, battery that was kept in the boot of the car all right got it got it interesting so um, now uh, you basically you did the editing i think uh, from um, the second film onwards right you were handling the editing by yourself um yes um um in the first film also i did sit with the editor we did um the i did uh, the first edit and gave the film to him and then he didn't actually look at that edit he made a cut of himself which was completely different from what i had initially imagined later the final cut was um, an amalgamation of both these edits uh great great so uh, see w- one other thing is that see uh, for a uh, film which is you know when you say like mainstream uh, narrative films and all that often the edits are or the cuts are triggered by um, you know the dialogues or the characters or their actions but when it comes to your films it is not easy uh, to find out what is the right what is the sweet spot to cut how do you actually uh, you know uh, see do you do you you know have a vision on how the picture should uh, you know form uh, in your mind before you start shooting and because it's easy usually in films that i've seen most of the time it is tr- there is a trigger element that actually uh, it could be the another character being introduced or a, a new dialogue starting or maybe a new character or an action but it's your edits are not based on any of that how do you come up with this formula of editing i don't know if it's a good thing to uh, talk to all these film students here but um i you know uh, when i'm shooting itself i have this idea of edit uh, most of the time so i don't uh, have any extra footages um other than you know what i am planning to use in the final cut so um, that's you know uh, but still you know during the edit there's so much um, you know uh, so many things happen and i usually end up uh, cutting off at least uh, 10 to 15 minutes of the footage um, yeah but um, for uh, for example when it came to 1956 central travel go the first cut even after all the cropping and stuff i still had around um, 97 minutes of the film later another um, 
uh, five minutes uh, i could you know leave out another five minutes when i came to the final cut got it got it so now uh, a more generic question so as an independent filmmaker what are the struggles that you had in the beginning of your career and uh, what are the advantages that you had because independent filmmaking is actually um, you know it, it is an independent establishment it is not connected to the mainstream cinema it's not uh, you know that studio driven culture or the producer driven culture which is happening there so um, you know why did you make that choice to go into independent filmmaking that's one and once i have made that decision that i don't want to go into uh, the you know the standard um, film industry i want to go into a parallel uh, filmmaking uh, you know path so after do making that de decision what are the struggles that you have faced and what are the advantages that you had uh, in that particular path uh don are you there uh sorry um i thought i was already talking um but i didn't realize that it was on mute anyway um first i will talk about the uh, t talk about why i made that decision um for me you know i wanted the freedom to make it make the you know uh, to have a control over the final product um and that was very important for me um beginning itself um you know when you uh, have a vision you, uh, you know like somebody else interferes in it and makes it something else somebody else comes with some other idea and you know like then towards the end it will be a totally different product um from what you had initially imagined and it we it need not necessarily have the soul of what you uh, had in mind in the beginning so so that's one of the major reasons i wanted to be you know uh, start with making independent films but again you know that comes at a cost so you wouldn't have enough uh, funds to make a film uh, the way you like again because um, you know when you don't rely on a big producer uh, you are left out with only what you have in your pocket and you have to make um, yeah then again you know uh, that comes with a lot of other restrictions so uh, another um, major challenge i have is after making the film is that i you know it's very difficult to distribute a film we don't have a proper distribution channel for independent films in india and um, the, the most of the audience uh, audience also don't uh, really Uh, look for independent films um these days things are changing uh, recently after the ott boom people are starting to watch more independent films and different and you know after you know like after getting access to films from all over the world more and more people are you know uh, starting to ex you know uh, experiment with their own taste in films and they are ready to watch uh very random films and um so i am able to uh find a niche audience these days so uh, I, another thing i uh, realized is that you it was you know this idea was there in the beginning itself but um you know with exper with experience it's a totally different thing so um, the thing is that you know you once you get established slowly or gradually Uh, you are uh, developing um, a bunch of audience for your films so uh, it's you know when i was making shavam i did in you know i had to find out i had to reach out to each and every person um, who would watch that film but now it's not that case anymore now there are people who would you know um, straight away um, uh, go and watch my films or um, they uh, those who wait for my films so uh, but the so consistency is the key in my opinion um you need to consistently make films with consistent conviction over you know what you want to achieve 
um i am not uh, like mahesh early uh, observed earlier i am not someone who sticks to one particular style of filmmaking i am, i try to experiment with the uh, language of the camera language of the film so later um, so the only consistency that you can do is to you know the, be honest with what you want to tell and what you um want to achieve um and you know uh, go for it with uh, complete conviction got it makes sense so now um your first film i think uh, when you made shavam uh, there was um, you know a, a different model that you have used for a distribution called cinema 1d um can you can you just talk about that what was that model like and how did you use it to uh, reach out to more people um cinema 1d was not uh, my invention it was already there um, many people were actually practicing similar distribution models uh, for independent films in kerala um, uh, uh, like people like uh, dr biju then sanal kumar shashidharan was the uh, one behind the cinema 1d concept and uh, he had already distributed his film uh, oral pokam using this model and i had this opportunity to observe and uh, travel uh, along with this cinema one day when he was distributing the film and then i uh, then, then after making my film um, when i was clueless about the distribution part i had this chat with sanal at that time and um i asked if i could use the i could use his um uh, cinema 1d which uh, which was a small cab uh, which already had a, sc- a huge screen as well as some equipments uh, projection equipments in it so um, he let me borrow it um and then uh, i used that uh, uh, vehicle and these equipments to uh, travel all around kerala and uh, showed the film to almost uh, 20000 people um within two months and that was a um, terrific experience for me as a filmmaker uh, so every time you know you are showing the film to an entirely different bunch of audience and they are telling you an entirely different opinion from what you have heard earlier so it was a um, big learning experience for me like it was almost like another film school or even better um and um yeah and i w- managed to get say, around 65 between 65 and 70 screenings all around kerala uh, it was mostly in colleges um libraries uh, sometimes in um you know like uh, local organizations um they arranged screenings so yeah um yeah that's how it went great that sounds like a very interesting platform uh especially for new uh, filmmakers to to travel along with their film and show it to as many people as uh, you know you want so uh, now you have um, you know uh, you just spoke about the ott um, platforms and uh, we all know that because of this you know especially after this pandemic like right now everyone is sort of hooked into these ott platforms and there is a huge debate happening right now whether to release films on uh, you know ott platforms or uh, in theaters now uh, how favorable are uh, ott platforms to independent cinema currently i mean all around india how Uh, you know um, is it a potential platform for independent filmmakers or you know do they still uh, ask for you know big cast members or you know things like that yeah definitely they um, ask for you know like in the uh, it was uh, that model was uh, clear for me from the beginning itself when netflix first came to india they were ready to take independent films uh, but you know that was um, i i had this uh, you know uh, i knew that they were, that was not going to last for a long time because in the beginning uh, that's how all these uh, big corporates work they take all the content uh, they can uh, almost everything that they can and then they choose um uh, uh, then they f- learn about the audience 
and their taste and um, then they stick on to the uh, content that 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 can be sold more like that's more sellable so uh, you know now, now in the beginning it was all about content they said oh, it's all about stories it's all about content now all of these big platforms are saying that oh we need that you know this and that cast or um, even even um, while choosing between um, the cast of a film they have um, their input and they have their own idea about what we should choose so they are actually uh, controlling the you know the filmmaking decisions a lot and um, i think that's a very normal thing uh, we cannot actually um uh, do a lot about it but um then again we have some niche platforms like movie for example uh, they are screening only independent or art house content uh, for most part um and i think some other platforms are also evolving um which have uh, which curate alternate content so Don't yeah it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing process and i think we are evolving as um you know uh, as a country as a, a bunch of people who, who are uh, watching different contents on online platforms even today when i even when i released santosh uh, tinde on antagasyam on ott mo- out of all the reviews i got i i know for sure that most of the people uh, who watched the film watched it on telegram or um, on a um, uh, pirated copy of the film so it's all you know like we have a long way to go before we uh, you know become mature enough to pay for what we consume and um, yeah it, it, to make uh, ott a proper method of distribution true got it got it rightly said i mean like um, i think independent filmmakers if they do start doing that to independent uh, you know it, it is not a good uh, way to go i mean like it survival is going yeah yeah but because you know like if you are um, even a pay per view model is not really uh, you know profitable for the producer uh, when we you know like you are left with um, you know like uh, coins or like pennies when you are actually distributing for um, pay per view because um, f- uh, for example if i talk about amazon Uh, for one hour of viewing they are paying only 4 rupees and um, <laughs> and it's you know like uh, so how many hours of viewing do you need to even recoup the money that you have invested for a film which is about 50 lakh uh, you know um uh, yeah so it's you know it's still you know we have a long way to go that's all i can say and i'm still clueless about um you know the uh, otts the only method of distribution um uh, only if you have um i think one has to explore different methods of distribution um without relying completely on ott only ott can be one of them uh, then uh, you should be able to find a, a satellite um a tv distribution in india and abroad um and pro, you know dvd sales i don't know how much of that is happening anymore um you know but you can have private uh, screenings um at universities and other stuff um then you know like so you have to explore so many different methods of distribution to recoup the money uh, uh, unless you have a big star at test your film got it got it so now i just wanted to ask you um what are your experiences with crowdfunding platforms like i think you have mentioned about kickstarter 
you know um, that um, you know is there a good platform for Indian independent filmmakers to start um, you know uh, looking for funds uh, to make their film that all you know um, something I'm, I'm not sure how popular Kickstarter is in India right now but um, what do you suggest is crowdfunding a good way to start for independent filmmakers I haven't had any recent experience with crowdfunding. The one that I did was for Vitta in 2017. That is, it has been already four years since then. But at that time, it was a very uh, difficult time. I was having a very difficult time with crowdfunding platforms because um, Indians were not with platforms like Kickstarter or um, um, at that time, there were so many of them, uh, which in, in Australia, there was another one. I forgot the name. Um, but in India, there were no uh, crowdfunding platforms dedicated uh, for films or even, you know, in general. But then um, Wishbury uh, started um, their work in India at that time. And Wishbury was the first one of that kind, I think. Um, then they they were ready to help. Uh, they offered their help, um, but um, but then again, I you know like after running a Kickstarter campaign, I thought I had this thought about who my potential investors go, were going to be. Then I realized that it was you know only the people who have watched my previous film are going to invest uh, in my next film. Uh, then um, and. And that's like that's the uh, you know the, that's the actuality of things too that, that's how it actually happened only the people who watched uh, shavam uh, invested in the second film um, they already had this idea about uh, how i was you know going to go about the content or the style of filmmaking um, and they were completely okay with it so it was um, so most of the funding that I got was done with a Facebook post, uh, and only and I I expected in the beginning that um, maybe my relatives and uh, my friends who are who are living abroad might be the ones who would invest in the film. But you know, strangely, or you know, uh, at that time I found it very strange. But now I don't. But uh, none of them were actually invested. None of them actually invested in the firm. It was only the people who, uh, you know, were your audience uh, once, or those who wanted to be your audience. Those are the people who invested in the firm. Um, yeah, and that was, you know, like an eye-opening experience too. Um, but then, uh, you know, like since the experience wasn't. Uh, as I expected in the beginning, or the effort was too much, um, I decided not to follow that path anymore. And it's it's not fair, um, also in a sense for you know at least in, in that's my opinion um, to uh, go back to these people every time you make a film, you know, go and ask them for money. That's not really fair. They supported you once, so you know. Next time, you have to use that opportunity and you know, make sure that you find your own funds. Got it. Got it. So now, um, another thing. I, it's about the, your experience with international festivals. So now that you have attended a lot of international film festivals, um, for an independent filmmaker, the the film's journey. Uh, it's is a it's a continuing process. It will not end after the release of the film. You will still have to take it at, to a lot of venues and festivals and things like that. In in commercial cinema, that is a completely different thing. Your movie comes out on, in the theaters, and then as a filmmaker, uh, your job is sort of done. And then all the other people will take care of the whole business part of it. So now, uh, as an independent filmmaker, it's it's you have to actually drive that journey uh, throughout. Uh, a film, you know, still, I mean, you have to do it. You might be doing it for your recent films. So, how much of effort is required for that after the film is made? And, um, you know, what is the amount of work that is required to get these films into these festivals? And 
um, you know, do you have a team that works for you or you, you will single-handedly do all of these things? Yeah, like, um, you know, like I said in the beginning about my first two films, I was clueless about what to do after making the film. I um, just imagined that the people would automatically come and, you know, ask for the film or uh, the film would, would find it, its own uh, destiny automatically. That's what I imagined. But, you know, I was completely wrong. Then um, after making two mistakes, um, with the next film, I had a bigger budget and I had an investor. Um, and um, so I had this responsibility and I was answerable to him. Um, in, not in terms of the returns, but in terms of, you know, the effort that I put in. So, um, so uh, after, the, you know, and in the beginning itself, they asked me for a strategy or a plan with, you know, uh, getting the film, uh, film to the festivals. And um, I had uh, been to uh, Film Bazaar once. Um, that was my only experience with curators or film programmers. And it wasn't very positive. Uh, but, you know, still I told them, okay, there's a venue. There's an avenue called Film Bazaar. We could try that. And there are film markets abroad. We could go there and try to screen the films there. Um, and they agreed. Uh, so after making the film, they were ready to take the film to Busan Film Market, where we screened. And uh, there the film got a little bit of publicity because um, a small feature came in the um, uh, variety. Um, and then um, uh, some other you know also i was able to network there i met a lot of curators and programmers i was able to talk to them i uh, got feedbacks on how, why my film is not suitable for uh, their festivals at least so i i got this idea about how these festivals work or how they how the programmers think um, i got this general idea about it then after one month, the film bazaar was happening in Goa and I went for that film bazaar. There I met more people and some of the same people I met in Busan also. So uh, by then, you know, that becomes an acquaintance. Uh, you are already, you know, you are already familiar with them. Uh, you already met them at a, a couple of cocktail parties. Now you are meeting them again here. So you know their names. They know your name. So, it, you know, it's it's all about, you know, uh, growing your circle and um, making um, in new connections. So at, at Film Bazaar, I was lucky to meet the uh, program director of uh, Moscow Film Festival. He watched my film there uh, because we had a public screening at Film Bazaar. Uh, that is uh, not public screening. I mean, like a private screening uh, for programmers, spe for specifically for programmers and media. Uh, there he watched that film and he was impressed by the film. So he asked me um, during one of the cocktail parties there, he asked, um, I went and met him and I, because I had already spotted him uh, at um, the screening and I said, uh, hello, sir. Um, my name is Don, and I'm coming from Kerala. You had watched my film uh, there. It is uh, this f particular film. And now what did you think about the film? And he said, yeah, I really like that film. And I would like to take it to the Moscow International Film Festival. Would you be interested in screening it there? Then um, I said, yeah, of course I would be. Um, then, you know, that's how the journey started. When once you get start getting noticed, uh, you know, more festivals would follow um, uh, automatically because because of this Moscow screening. The next year, IFFK screened the same film, and uh, you know it also traveled to several other festivals abroad. I, I traveled to Spain um, and also you know uh, several festivals in India also. Then, and and the journey never ends uh, for an independent film like um, you know not for, not only for one film it's it's always like you know the, the and the film never gets too old um, 
because I, I know this fact because um, one of the films that was there in uh, 2019 Film Bazaar with me, uh, with my film, uh, didn't get screened anywhere for the next two years almost. Then this year, uh, that film got, uh, got a premiere at Busan Film Festival. And after Busan, it went to London Film Festival. Uh, not any uh, festival in London, the London in, in London, the BFI London Film Festival. Then um, many other festivals followed, Pingayo, um, and this year he is going to screen it at a big festival in India also. So, you know, the, the journey can start at any point. You wouldn't know. Like, you know, he had to wait for almost two years uh, without knowing the future of his film. Um, yeah, also uh, when I was, uh, and also I, I was talking to other programmers also while uh, this decision to screen the film at Moscow happened. Um, I had I, I was talking to a um, guy from Tribeca uh, also but they didn't confirm anything uh, then I was talking to a guy from um, um, a director's fortnight at Cannes uh, they also didn't give me a definite answer um, they were like you know taking their time to take this in, and I had to grab the first opportunity that I got I, if I waited for another one uh, another festival um, and uh, if that also didn't happen, then I would be losing both the opportunities. So I, you know, I went with the first opportunity that I got. Uh, I don't know whether that's the best strategy, but who uh, was starting out, I think, um, you know, that was the only option that I had at that time. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. Got it, got it, got it. So uh, now another thing that I just noticed that uh, you are you were also part of the recent uh, IFFK jury, right? And uh, you know, uh, and you know that that's a that's such a huge thing. And um, your film was actually seen there, and right now you are a jury member in that. Uh, you know, festival. I think uh, Krishnendu's film was also there in the list. Um, that uh, so. I was actually following that, and I thought, you know, I saw uh, that you were a member of the jury. Um, how did you feel about what? What is your thoughts on that? Uh, what, is, what is your experience on that? How did you get into the board, and then? You know... Yeah, we had, um, you know, um, it, it again, you know, it was another uh, learning experience for me because you, uh, even though you are forced to watch so many films that you really don't connect with. Um, you are still um, learning from other people's mistakes and other people's um, some good decisions by other people also. So so many um, so many uh, you know, bad films were there, bad, poorly made or uh, without any vision or people just wanted to. Uh, you know, the, uh, one positive thing about digital uh, filmmaking. Uh, in my opinion, or, or you know, or in the opinion of many other people, is that you know, it's um, the um, the medium is so approachable for you, for anyone, for that matter, and that's a very good thing. So when that happens, um, uh, one side effect is that you would get so much trash also. Um, uh, so uh, you you know the and the process is to eliminate all the trash and you know, find uh, the only the gems. Um, so, and uh, that was, you know, that is something that we were trying to do. And, uh, you know, there are so many ethical issues there uh, while choosing a film. You know, sometimes, you know, like you personally like a film, um, uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, you are a part of a jury and it's a democratic decision. Um, also, you know, you are per working for a particular film festival and it has its own um, criteria for selecting a film. So all these factors are there still, um, you know, luckily I was, you know, um, uh, I didn't have to make too many amendments uh, when it came to um, the final list. Um, I didn't have to leave out many films that I really liked. I, you know, I had to sacrifice a couple of films from my personal list, but, uh, you know, because it's a democratic process and all. Uh, 
yeah but still you know like you like i said earlier it was a big learning experience you were you know i had to watch almost uh, six to seven films a day and um, um, you were thinking and you know you were watching uh, talking about films thinking about films it was living in films uh, you know or, or almost like you know when you are at a shoot um, you are thinking only about film you are talking only about films so that was that kind of experience and it was really enriching and it was really eye opening and I, you know I, it was very inspiring as well uh, when you see some uh, films and some you know like especially like you know like the film that you mentioned krishnandu's film it was it was a very daring film you know like i wouldn't uh, call myself uh, that courageous he 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 is like you know really courageous filmmaker who has you know gone beyond the uh, limits even for an um, uh, independent filmmaker got it right so uh now we we are about to uh you know uh, reach the end of the session i just want to open up khushi can you can we uh, open uh, the um, the venue for some questions from the audience and the students if they have khushi or shailesh you there Yes, sir. Uh, can we open up for some questions from students? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Um, I think we can. I don't have a, uh, any questions, though. All right. Uh, so, uh, students, if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand. I think Turn on the. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can pull them up, sir. If they have any questions. Please raise your hands, and you can ask them the questions. We're about to wind up, but. Uh, if you have questions you can definitely ask uh could you just check if they have the option to raise their hands yeah it's there sir mohit kumar wants to ask yeah yeah uh yeah. hey don hi 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 yeah i've been i've been waiting for this <laughs> um uh from the very start i noticed you mentioned like uh, when you were applying to all those film festivals and you were going for the film freeway and stuff i mean uh, for our film samsara with mahesh sir we did that we are like taking in all the film festivals here so you did mention um you would have done things differently there were a lot of things that you didn't know and uh, with the time and the experience that you have now what would you suggest a beginner filmmaker uh, what should they be doing when they are approaching those film festivals what are the prerequisites that one needs one needs to consider um the, the you know as a when you start out i think the best way to go is uh, through film bazaar because that's the one of the major platform that we have here for filmmakers mm -hmm. and uh, where you could uh, you get to meet these uh, curators and film programmers and um, there are um, in and they give you a catalog that's that's a very good thing and um, it's worth the money that you pay there um, so that has all these contacts all these different contacts and um, they um, you you get to send them all a screener but you know keep in mind that all the people all the filmmakers are sending them screen up too so it's best to attend in person and meet them in person and to get acquainted with them and then show them your film um you know or at least pitch the film uh, and you know like at film bazaar they have so many things happening you get um, a venue to uh, pitch your film you get to show a 2 minutes clip of the film if your film gets selected in the film bazaar recommended list so there and also you get um, an avenue to screen your film the entire film but not too many people watch it but if you are lucky uh, there could be one or two programmers there and you know maybe one of them can like your film that, like what happened to my film 
so um, yeah so all this you know uh, it's a big uh, competition and it's it, the competition is increasing every year and um, you know it's uh, it's all about you know uh, trying and uh, keeping it with this and you know making your working on your connections and circles got it got it so yeah I, i'll make a note of it a film bazaar that's like the best place to start networking right cool um also there's this uh i'm not sure what it actually means i mean this is no question but what's a film programmer oh uh we don't I like you know when i was working when i was working at iffk when i was uh selecting films for them hmm. uh it was a very straight away uh you know process you know you watch all the films that is sent to you and then you choose you know like as a uh, group of selectors you uh, sit together and discuss it and you choose the film but for for most of the big festivals it's not really practical it's not possible because they get submissions around 4000 and between 4000 and 10000 a year um mm. and it's not possible for each one of them to sit and watch all these films so they have um you know programmers uh, who travel to different countries and pick uh, the best films from those countries and they go to venues like film bazaar and uh, busan film market and all these film markets um where they get uh, you know if they watch and they are so experienced and um, they you know it's their livelihood so they if they watch you know like a 5 uh, minutes clip they get a you know a vague idea about how the film is going to be and if they are interested they would ask you for the full film and then they would uh, pitch this film to you know, the uh, the other selectors at the festival and he, this programmer would be choosing you know like a pool of films and he would be uh, or he or she would be sending this pool of films to the program uh, to the selectors and then the selectors would make the final decision got it got it damn yeah. okay this is the process yeah aha uh-huh. so they're like uh, the outworldly creators they go out and they uh, search for films and all and these are the venues that they go to yeah and so- uh, and don't think that it's a very straightforward process because most of the program like in it, it will depend on the programmers or um, he, you know like uh, how their intentions are how um, you know uh, good they are at their job and how, what they taste in films are like or which programmer is appointed for india all these different oh, factors yeah. matter yeah uh-huh. yeah <laughs> it's like that bias that film uh, that programmers bias is going to come there <laughs> so you're going to find <laughs> Ah, yep, that's also something to consider. So, actually, by the way, do you uh, look for certain film programmers, like someone that uh, actually likes the kind of genre that you are making, and that way you connect with them? Um, it's not, um, you know, like um, it's not one-dimensional like that because uh, mm-hmm. even um, you know, even a programmer who really liked two of my films didn't like the last film. like it can uh-huh. happen and some uh, for another programmer um, you know uh, it could be your f- favorite film it could be your best film but you know for a programmer it's too t- too difficult for his audience you know like or too uh, too arty or uh, too uh, off beat you know it they because they are also look you know because film uh, film festivals are also becoming a commercial avenues these days so they also uh, mm-hmm. are looking to please their audience uh, so they are trying to uh, if they have a film that would attract 1000 people and if they have a film that would attract 5 people they would definitely go for the 1000 people one so uh-huh. yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah this this now sounds like a hit and miss uh there's that uh, programmer's bias then he's also considering all the, his audience like what kind of films they'll be considering and what kinds of fine films they like cool cool definitely ah uh, i'm i'm definitely making a lot of notes of it <laughs> thank you for that info uh, that was quite helpful yeah you're welcome mohit 
Thanks, Don. Guys, do we have any other questions? Any one of you, if you want to ask something, uh, you can come uh, and you can ask. Come up and ask. Raise your hand. Okay. I think that's it. So, uh, thank you, Dawn. Thank you for coming. It was an amazing session. We actually learned a lot from you. Uh, an inspiring journey. Definitely going to be useful for all the students who, who are tuning in. And uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming uh, out of your busy uh, schedule and then, you know, engaging us with a lot of, uh, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Mahesh, and thank you, everyone, for listening patiently. And um, and, and this was an opportunity for me to uh, remind myself of many basic things. And you know, um, um, yeah, the, the, those are some. Uh, most of them are many uh, things that I would usually forget. Um, so thank you for giving me this opportunity to remember all this and uh, uh, thank you for the wonderful questions too thank you mahesh thank you thank you thank you guys good night have a nice weekend bye bye thank you everyone um, thank you sir and good night everyone thank you, sir.